Hey, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a video for you today on how to restore a quilt. On Quilter's Life Part 2, I went ahead and I sat around and I unstitched a quilt. Thank God it was not that hard to unstitch. So I thought this would be a really great video on how the process of restoring a quilt would be. Yeah, I'll see you in the restoring. All right, bye. Part 1 of restoring a quilt, and this is very important, evaluate the quilt. Check that quilt out, in and out. And just look at it. Look at all its problems. Look at all the tears. Look at the weakness of the fabric. Look at the condition of the batting. At what it feels like. Feel the you know texture of the batting. Look at the condition of the back fabric. I mean, really, examine that quilt. Look at it. You looked at the quilt and evaluated it. Test it. Uh, in Quilter's Life, and I'm going to put some clips on what I did, I went ahead and I, in one of the squares, I took it apart and I looked at the condition of the fabric and I even ironed it and saw if the fabric was able enough to handle it. It looked like it was just kind of lost a little bit of its strength and wovenness, but it still had the ability to endure some some tension. If your patch cannot handle that, then it would be better for you just to tack everything down and put like some patch on patch fabric on it and then put the fabric the quilt away. Just leave it alone. Now I wanted to share something about taking a quilt apart. It takes forever. It's a lot of work. It's a pain in the butt. Uh yeah. It's not going to be an easy job. It's not an easy task. So if someone goes, oh, by the way, can you restore a quilt for me? <laughs> I'll pay you $10. So you know, uh -uh. This is a real job. This is a long process. It takes a lot of time and a lot of patience for the person who is literally taking something apart takes more time than putting it together. So here you're unstitching a whole quilt. Get my drift. As I started unstitching it, I realized that the thread itself had become very brittle. And that really did help me a lot because the, fa the thread was so brittle that I was able literally to get the back fabric and the batting and just start ta -ta 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 popping it off instead of seam ripping it off. Now let me show you my favorite seam ripper. Y'all know what my favorite seam ripper is. It's one of these beauties. Tooltron has these for like $2. I love this. This is sharper than... This is sharp and it's beautiful. Sucker's sharp. Also, be careful you don't cut yourself because it is so sharp. Uh, you can nick your fingers and it hurts. I experience. <laughs> experience. Also, as you're seam ripping apart, you start learning other things about the quilt that you didn't know when you first evaluated it. Like what I learned is the corner pieces. I thought they were in pretty good condition. I really did. But as I went along, I put a barely any pressure. They just split open. They could not handle pressure. Now, um, initially I was going to keep all these pieces and just tear them apart and keep the corner sets and just try to just take everything apart as a whole and just fix a couple blocks. But I realized that the corner pieces that were connected to the sashing, they were in bad shape. Just get rid of all the sashing and all the corner pieces and just save the blocks. So as you're going along, you kind of need to reevaluate a little bit and then go to the next part, okay? Cleaning up your block is the next part of this process and it's gonna take you a little bit of, you know, rubbing, rolling. The quilt itself, the, the fabric that you're trying to save has tons of quilting thread everywhere. There's thread underneath, there's thread in the seams. Get rid of all the thread and just rub the thread with the roller and remove the thread or any black pieces that are in behind the fabric. And that took another couple hours. Okay, so after I cleaned up my blocks, I decided to personally put the blocks, I have a washer that has a little washer on the very top, one of those mini washers. I decided to put the blocks inside the mini washer and just allow it to go through a gentle cycle. I did put detergent and I did put a little bit of a softener, just a little bit. I wanted to see if the material could handle a wash, a gentle cycle anyway. I saw that it could handle ironing and that when I sprayed water in it, it did absorb it well and that it could handle it. So I thought it could wash it. Also too, I don't know, this quilt was old and I don't know what was on it. I don't know, you know, I wanted a clean block. 
The great thing about doing that is once I washed it, when I pulled everything out, a lot of the thread that was woven inside the fabric itself started coming off. I thought I removed most of the thread when I did before I washed it, and then I found out that there was still a lot of thread everywhere. After I washed them, I put them around my work area and just let them air dry and then went back and ironed it initially and then go back and iron it from the back. If you can see here, this fabric has like divots. When the needle goes down on the fabric, it punctures almost like a valley downwards and then it comes back and puts a valley upwards. So here you can see it has like some divots. I don't know if you see the divots right here. But then it also has divots on the underside. So if you just iron one side, you're not making the fabric, you're making the fabric on the top side from the steam and the ironing contract on the top. You also want it to contract underneath. So iron both sides and that's how you prepare the fabric to go ahead and start ironing it for your interfacing. I went and purchased a really fine interfacing and I went and bought some cheap interfacing. This interfacing cost me a dollar a yard and um, for I could literally do probably eight blocks on a yard of fabric, maybe six, probably eight. I think it was six. And it from the top, and then I also ironed it from the back because sometimes it didn't iron all the way through. Also, as I was ironing, I found thread in between the top and the wovenness, and sometimes the embroidery was falling apart or pulling off a little bit, or the tails of it and it would come up from the underneath, go back and it's easy to peel it off and then cut any thread that you find and remove it and re-iron. This is really easy to work with. The next part is fixing the messed up blocks. I'm gonna share how I fix two kind of different ways of fixing the blocks. One of the easiest ways of fixing a block is that if you see this block has like a hole right there, um, on these blocks, what I did is I cut a little piece of interfacing, okay, little piece, and on the back, I put it facing, the glue side facing down, just like that, so it's not glue up, and then the glue side of the interfacing facing up towards the, towards the fabric. So in the sense, I don't know if you can see it, I created a patch right here. You can see the square. Of course, it was not that big. And in a sense, the interfacing became part of the fabric when I patched it down. And then it glued to the interfacing this way. And this way, when I go back, I can hand stitch that area and thread it through. And then in a sense, I fix that hole. And that's with the quilt blocks that only had like a little hole here and there that weren't huge holes that's how I fixed those holes now the second way I fixed other blocks it's I went ahead like this block was really bad this block was really bad really bad I went ahead and I cut the block off the the sheet off and I went to Joanne's and I purchased some muslin that kind of look the hue of the color of the material now of course it's a little thicker it's a little bit more woven but it really looked very similar and I added new fabric and I re-sewed new fabric to the area. And at first when I did it, I was like, oh my God, I don't think I did the right thing. But I'm glad I did do it because once you iron the piece of the that you replaced and you iron the old piece to the interfacing, the interfacing lightened up the older piece and it looked very much similar. It didn't look as bad as I thought. Now I'm gonna have to go back like on the one that had the rabbit, the R, and embroider on my machine, the letter R in the font that she put it on and kind of try to put it in the same placement and that's how I'm gonna fix those blocks that I had to cut out and re-piece. I tried to save as much as I possibly could that applique. The lettering I wasn't too concerned with but I was really concerned like with the cute appliques that she hand stitched, these was all hand stitched. And so that's how I fixed like really torn blocks. Some areas I just had to do a small patch and some areas I did a bigger patch. And on the very top row, uh, I think on the letter A with the apple, I had to really patch that sucker down. But in a distance, it didn't really, um, it doesn't look horrible. 
it looked like I fixed it, but I been I fixed the whole thing. So yeah, <laughs> fixed all those blocks and put the interfacing on them. I trimmed off the blocks and this is the exciting part for me because once I trimmed off the blocks, I knew I was on the home run because in a sense before it's just really the process of restoration and trying to find ways of fixing everything that was messed up and now everything's kind of ready to start rebuilding the quilt top. I decided to cut all the blocks nine by nine. They were 10 by 10. And I also decided to recut brand new sashing, of course. And I cut my sashing, I think it was four by nine. And I went ahead and I trimmed everything. And then I also cut the sashing. Now this is when you're at the home run. Now you're building the quilt. Um, I'm not gonna go through the process of building a quilt, but I will share some videos. I went ahead and I attached all the sashing, all the vertical sashing all the way through. The great thing about doing this too, take pictures of your quilt so you could try to restore it as similar as what you got. Try, take pictures. And I took a lot of pictures, which I'm real thankful because then I could count how many rows it was and how many blocks this person had across and how many blocks she had in a vertical position, you know, going down. And so I went ahead and I pieced it pretty much exactly like the first person pieced it. The neat thing about it is the quilt top without the border, because I didn't measure it with the border, it was 74 by 46, I believe. When I was done with the quilt top itself without the border, I was 74.5 plus 46.5 times 46.5. I The quilt itself was the same exact size as when I got it, the quilt top area, and I just added a half inch. So I lost an inch in the block, but I added an inch to the sashing. So that's how I did that. So almost, it looks exactly the same to the original. So yeah, that's a restoration. Like I have a quilt that my daughter has that for some reason, uh, <laughs> the sashing is splitting. Instead of taking this quilt apart, which I'm not gonna do because this is extremely tight quilting. It is gonna be a hell of a lot of work. It's not even worth it. I am going to buy some more fabric and make myself sashing strips. And I'm going to hand stitch the sashing back down. Like I'm gonna go applique it down. Like you could act like you would applique a piece, but I'm gonna do a whole long piece, maybe, <laughs> and just hand quilt around, not go all the way through, but just hand quilt around, just some filigree or something that's easy and not very time consuming, so that this material can be supported. And I'm just gonna put more fabric on top. So some quilts you're not going to have to fully restore. Some of them you could just go ahead and patch like I'm going to do like my daughter's quilt. And I just wanted to share you kind of like a different quilt so that you can see the process of restoration. It's all different based on each quilt. Some of them you're just going to have to stitch down and close the holes. Some of them you're going to patch and some of them are going to have to just take apart. It's just up to the quilt. I really do hope you like this video and I'll see ya in the next one. All right, bye.